Welcome to Unit 9 of OnlinePHPClass.com and in this unit we'll be talking about sessions and cookies. Alright, so how would you like to have users log in or at least have user-driven websites? How would you like to create web-based applications? How would you like to be able to present to the user information relating to who they are, what they like, etc.? Of course, that information is information that they provided to you, such as their username or their first and last name or email address or that kind of stuff. All right, so what are sessions and cookies? Sessions and cookies are a way to provide information based on the user on the site. So typically used for having users log into the site although they can be used for individuals visiting the site as well. Cookies can also be used as a way to know who is visiting without having the user log in again, i.e. when you log on to websites and there's a checkbox that says remember me or um, or uh, I've seen ones on banking sites saying yes this is a secure computer or something like that and basically um, stating that you're not in a public place um, so what happens is a cookie gets dropped on the computer to skip that level of authentication. Um, similar for like the remember me checkboxes, those are cookies. Uh, cookies are stored, and we'll get to this in a minute, but cookies are stored on the client, uh, on the actual user's computer who's visiting you, and sessions are server-side. Okay. So here's the key points, like I just started mentioning. Sessions are server-side. They are stored on the PHP server itself, on your web server, and they expire when the user leaves the site or after the session timeout. And uh, they don't allow the user, they don't require the user to allow the sessions. Okay, so you don't have to cater specifically to browsers or security settings on the user side with sessions. If you're using sessions, they will work. Um, cookies, on the other hand, are client side. They expire when configured by the programmer, um, and they require the user to allow cookies. So if you've ever been to a website and it says you must have cookies enabled to visit the site, um, that's why. Okay, they use cookies, and um, that's I mean that that's why they want you to have them enabled. Um, you'll never see a site that says you must have sessions enabled because well, <laughs> sessions are server side. So these are the key points between them. How they work? Well, basically, their var variables are stored in the session or cookie. These variables are then later accessible. And the variables can be things like username or otherwise user specific unique identifier to be able to uniquely identify the user. You can store whatever you want in the variables and then put the variables in a session or cookie. Basically, one way I like to think of them is they kind of like carry around what it is that you put in them. So they follow the user, so to speak. Um, in a sense that, you know, when, when you make a, a reference to a particular session or a particular cookie, you're usually talking about a particular user or a particular um, user who then logged into your website, a particular user session. So if they log in on multiple computers at the same time, you may be talking about multiple sessions. And you may have multiple cookies placed on the computers, one on each of the ones that logged in. All right, so how would you implement sessions? Well, we have to, in order to talk about implementing a session, we have to talk about starting a session, uh, optionally naming a session. We'll talk about why that's important. Adding variables to a session, retrieving variables from a session, and destroying a session, which is also ending a session, which is PHP uses session destroy. So that's why we put destroying a session here. To start a session, you use session underscore start open paren, close paren, semicolon. Um, the note says that this must be before the headers are sent. Okay, so we talked about PHP headers a little bit. Um, basically, if the headers can't be sent, uh, if you get a message saying cannot send header, inf uh, cannot start session header information already sent or something like that, check that no white space or other output was already sent to the us user. Okay, if you have a web page, if you have a PHP page, it's going to utilize sessions. Your first line should be an open PHP tag, 
and your second line should be a session start. In fact, it doesn't matter after your open PHP tag where you put the session start, but you have to have your open PHP tag be the first line because otherwise you'll be sending that blank line to the user and then that forces the headers to go. And you can't do that because the session information is actually stored in the header. Okay. All right. To name a session, you use session underscore name. And um, the name is actually optional because if you don't provide one, the name of the current session is actually returned. And keep in mind that if you don't name a session, there will be a name to the session. It will just be a long string of, I'm pretty sure, they're hexadecimal uh, characters. Okay, using a name is important, especially if the web server is hosting several sites or several PHP applications that use sessions. So, basically, if you're utilizing one Apache web server and you're hosting multiple sites on it that are going to utilize sessions, you want to put a session underscore name. Uh, you want to name your session. Otherwise, what you could have is um, a user logs onto your site and uh, they log onto one site and then you could have, the, if they went to another site, their authentication information would already be in the session um, if you didn't name your sessions differently. Okay, so if you wanted to implement some kind of single sign-on and you wanted to put specific variables in your session for the user authentication token, then one way to do it is to have the sessions named the same, though I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I would still recommend using um, different names for your session and implement single sign-on in a slightly different way. Um, that's a topic that goes beyond the scope of the course. However, if you're interested, again, feel free to post in the forum and we can talk about single sign-on. Um, okay. The function session underscore name must be called before every session-based request, including session start. Okay, so in reality, if you're going to use session underscore name in your PHP file, you're going to open the PHP tag, put session underscore name, name your session, then do session underscore start. Then, once you've established a session, you have to add variables to it, meaning you basically think of a session like a container, okay, and it's following the user, or it's going with the user. And now you're going to put um, things in that container, variables in that container for the user to uh, to have. So optionally, there was a function called session underscore register. Or I'm sorry, originally. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. Alright, originally, there was a function called session underscore register. Though that function has been deprecated. Okay, what you used to do is just open, you know, use session underscore register. First parameter was variable name. Second parameter was what you wanted to store in that variable in the session. Um, the now suggested way of adding variables to a session is through the use of the super global session array. Basically, the variable is the index of the array, and the value is what that item is set to. To retrieve variables from a session, we simply access the item of the super global session array. So if we set session with an index of username equal to the user's username, we can access it through the same variable name. To end a session, Typically, you have something like a logoff.php uh, to log off the user. Okay, and what this page? Okay, I don't know what this page meant. Um, but anyway, I guess what this page, sure. To what this page did, I <laughs> guess I could finish the sentence. Um, what it does is it would move the user back to the logon screen after destroying their session. So to end the session, we must first start the session on that page so that PHP knows what session we are going to end. And in order to start the session, we must set the session name before the session. So that leaves us with this. Session underscore name, our name here, session underscore start, session underscore destroy. Then implement code to redirect user to the logon page and tell them that they were logged out. One of the ways I like to tell them that they were logged out is I put a variable that gets echoed on the logon page. Of course, it gets sanitized. Um, and then what I do is I set that variable here, uh, either in the redirect, and I tend to use header redirects. Um, I 
could show header redirects to you. I'll uh, probably have to do that. Um, so I typically use header redirects with the message passed as a variable in the get request of the header redirect, so in the URL. Um, another way to do it is to set a global or set a variable and then include the logon form and have that variable get echoed just like I mentioned before. Um, Alright, so that leaves us with this. Um, I could show you redirects real quick. Let's see here. Um, let's say at the top, I didn't want color PHP to do anything. I just wanted to redirect it. I'll just do header, uh, location. This is how you actually set a header. Location, google.com. Okay. And then if I go there, could be because it's not an actual browser. Maybe if I go Oops. Got to the no input file specify. That is how you do it. Header location. Alright, I don't know why that's not working. It could have something to do with the fact that we're using dev PHP. Um, I, I don't know. But basically, that sets the header. And I use PHP header tag because uh, using a meta refresh requires the client to do the refresh and reload, whereas the PHP tag, although it requires the client, it's not dependent on someone having um, meta refresh tags disabled or anything like that. I'm putting it in the header rather than putting it in the body and then having the browser interpret. All right. Um, Alright, that's how you destroy. Now we'll talk about cookies. We'll have to talk about creating a cookie, retrieving values from a cookie, deleting a cookie, and checking for browser support. Uh, there's a very interesting reason why setting values, putting variables in a cookie is not a separate bullet, and we'll see why in a minute. Here's how to create a cookie. Set cookie. You use the set cookie command. Returns a boolean. You pass it the name of the cookie. Um, and the value of the cookie. It's expiration from a Unix epoch time. And the path and domain of the cookie, which we'll, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, plus you have a couple of, uh, you have the secure boolean, HTTP only uh, boolean, which uh, I'll mention in the next slide. So name we mentioned is the name of the cookie. Value is the value. Think of it as what you're setting the variable equal to. Name of the cookie essentially being the name of the variable. Um, so here's exactly why you're not putting um, variables in a cookie because you're creating the cookie of that variable. Um, expire. Unix epoch time, the cookie will expire. If it's set to zero or not specified, it defaults to when the browser closes, and which is essentially the end of the user session. Okay. Time and date is covered in the next unit. So we'll talk about uh, how to use Unix, Unix epoch time. Um, there's a reason why I put time and date after session cookies, and it has to do with the labs and uh, a few of the other uh, order of prerequisites uh, in order to cover it. So here's uh, name value expire. Then we have path. Path is the path a cookie is available. So it defaults to the current directory set to slash to allow for entire domain. Basically, this is um, the path off of the domain name. 
Okay, so if I had online PHP class.com, the cookie would def the path of the cookie would default to uh, I don't know. Say I had online PHP class.com slash members slash whatever. The default of the path would be members, and the cookie would only work for um, requests within that members directory. Um, if you want the cookie to be available to the top level online PHP class.com, you would set path equal to slash. Um, domain is the domain the cookie is available. Okay, so if you want it available to all subdomains of onlinephpclass.com, you set it to dot onlinephpclass.com. Um, otherwise, you set it to the domain that you want it to be available to. Uh, notice that this is actually uh, the domain itself. Um, what I mean is, you're not able to you're not able to like hijack another uh, domain's cookie. The server knows that you know, it knows its domain. It knows what the request is coming for. So, you know, you're not going to be able to hijack cookies, so to speak. So, uh, domain is the domain the cookie is available to. Best thing, I mean, easiest thing at least, is to set path to slash and set domain to dot domain name dot com, uh, where domain name represents the domain name. I typically use sessions um, for uh, pretty much all of my session cookie stuff, I typically use sessions. People like to, to talk about cookies, so um, this is this is why I'm touching on them. And I do think they are helpful and they do play a role. So, Alright, more about secure and HTTP only. Um, secure um, if you only want the cookie to be accessible over HTTPS connections. Um, it's on the programmer to only set the cookie on HTTPS connections. So you have to test if you're on an HTTPS connection for you to set the cookie. All right, HTTP only. If it's set to true, it only allows the HTTP protocol to view the cookie. So it blocks JavaScript from viewing the cookie, and it doesn't work in all browsers, and it only works in PHP greater than uh, greater than or equal to 5.2.0. All right, to get values from the cookie, you use the same method as sessions. You just use the the underscore cookie super global. Cookie values also exist in underscore request. Keep that in mind. Okay. So if you set the name of the cookie to my cookie, its value would be retrieved with underscore cookie. You know, my cookie being the index. To delete a cookie, you set the same values used to set the cookie with set cookie, though you set the value of the cookie to a boolean false or an empty string. Note that it's not a string false. Okay, it's a boolean false or an empty string. PHP will delete any cookie that has its value set to boolean false. Oh, I even wrote not string false uh, or an empty string. Okay, so that's why. To check for browser support, one of the easiest ways to check is to set a cookie and attempt to retrieve its value. There's a dilemma though. Cookie values can only be retrieved on the next page load after they are set. So. I'm including sample code for cookie compatibility, and the code was not developed by us at onlinephpclass.com. It was developed by, I just found it on the internet, and tested it, looked at it. Um, it's pretty, you know, solid code from what I can tell, uh, and it's being included without warranty, and of course for educational purposes. Gives you an idea how you can check for browser support. Alright, for the demo. We're going to modify the background color changer site to have users log in using sessions and we'll implement a checkbox to have the user stay logged in. And actually we're coming to the end of online PHP class so I think what I'm going to do is change this demo up a bit. I think what I'll do is I'll do the first bullet and for the exercise I'll have you do both. So. If I take a peek at the exercise, it's to do the demo with, with both of the bullets. I'll keep it that in the way it is, but for the demo, I'll show you how to make the background color changer site to have the users logged in using sessions. Um, and then it'll be fairly simple for you to implement the checkbox to have the users stay logged in. I'm not going to get too fancy with using a database table to look up username, look up password. 
um, if you want to do that for your exercise feel free the exercises are not meant to be the same as the demo I mean the task in terms of the wording is the same as the demo but the exercise is meant to give you to take the demo and build upon it and experiment okay that's that's what all of these are about because these are the foundational elements I keep coming back to foundation these are the foundational elements for PHP development and I want you to be able to start to put them together and start to think outside of the box um, and many of you um, that are listening you know that are watching or listening to this course will have already done that um, and I encourage uh, if you haven't to to, to do that um, okay so what I'm going to do simply is create a login form oops alright create a login form and where it asks for the username I'm not going to worry about password I'll just ask for a username take an arbitrary username whatever they pass you create a session with that username okay so I'll show you how to do that alright so what we'll do is I'll create a new and this will be a login form uh, and we'll do input type equal text name equals username value equals blank okay. Actually, post it to color.php. Oh, I know why. I was going to say, why aren't the colors showing? Because I didn't actually save it. There we go. Alright, username. Now, I'll go to color.php. I would put a redirect. Uh, I don't know. I'll have to test it and see if it works. Yeah, see, it just shows me the header, which I find to be very weird. Um, One way to actually do it. Just include it. Oh, okay, that's the cookie. That's the session. Um, question is, why is it echoing? Uh, show headers. I wonder if show headers is turned on. 
might be why. Alright, so you see the session is actually changing. Uh, if I enter Tom, store it. That's my session. And it worked. Um, I think there must be something that. Is there an option? Oh, sections. Sessions. Oh, um, I meant header. What was that expose? There's something you said expose PHP. Oh, that's not it. Yeah, I don't know why. I'll have to look that up. But anyway, it is working, as you can tell. Um, go to the login page. If it's blank, you get the login page back. Otherwise, you get that. And you might say, well, that they, how do I know there's an actual session? Well, here's the session identifier. And it's actually not X. Um, one way to know... Oops. Is I can take on color, I can say session name, color picker. Sorry, this is a session identifier. It's a SID. Um, that's my unique session uh, underneath this session name. Alright, um, so if, what was I going to do now? Oh, I, what I wanted to do is show you how you can utilize. So, this is kind of, okay, if I go create another one. This is how you can do it. I'll create a new file. All right, session test. Session underscore name, color breaker, session underscore start. Okay, if session Yeah, so I, it's not gonna work because dev PHP must be refreshing. But one way to 
tell. So it knows in the in the same actual um, you know one thing you can do this is one thing you can do uh, I was gonna say include it What you can normally do is you just do a session underscore start, and then you have access to the session global array. Don't know why. I have a. I don't know why the header is showing, and I don't know why this isn't working the way. It must be a function of dev PHP, but I promise you, this is how you do it. Um, all right. What I'll do here for debugging. Even, well, actually, never mind. Yeah, it's blank. So it must. Cookies will be slightly different. Cookies will work. Sessions, it's, it's reloading the session when I view. If I view it in a browser, though. Was a yeah. online PHP class dot com was the folder I saved it as, but don't think. Oh, that is right. Eh. All right. Um. All right. Now if I change this to login check, log on log on check. No. It's log in check, right? Yeah. And it doesn't see that the user's logged in. That's really weird. Let me just double check to make sure. Session name, color picker, session start, and we set user name, and it knows because we are using username. That's how you implement them. Now I'm just trying to prove they were implemented. Color picker, session start. you know what? Sessions close when you close the browser. So it probably treats it like I'm closing browser. Alright, so what I just did to test was I copied the 
folder that I had my um, my documents in for for uh, Dev PHP. Copied that from uh, the C drive on lanephpclass.com, and I put it in the HD Docs folder under C Zamp Zamp. Now, if you when you installed, if you did not, if you didn't change the default from just C colon slash, if you didn't change it, um, like which I talk about in the install video, then it would just be C colon slash Zamp slash HD Docs. And I copied that folder here. Then what you can actually do is you can go. Um, to a regular browser because you're running a you're running two web servers basically so go to a web, regular browser and to localhost which goes there without the board number uh, only phpclass.com color.php all right so um, I already uh, tested this but basically if I do say um, let's say Dan um, I type enter color picker hi Dan alright because I put the hi now I'm gonna just change color to login check .php. and it says so Dan is logged in so you see I didn't call that page from the page itself I just went to it and so you can that's how you can chain pages on a website um, I want to show you the redirect because in this example I go to DevPHP and I actually open what I'll do is I'm going to open the XAMPP I'm going to open my XAMPP version HDDocs I'm going to open the um, color.php okay uh, did it open it? yes okay if the user is not logged in Oh, I already do it by including. Um, you know what I can do? Just to show you that redirect works. I can just create a redirect. So I'll close this. And, oh, I, I know how I'll do it. I will create a logoff.php. So to create a logoff.php, session underscore name, login or color picker same name session underscore start session underscore destroy and then redirect to the login page and I wanted to show you how how to do a message so I'll do something like equals and you are find out where I'm at here. Alright, I'm in XAMPP. Good. This is logout.php. And I want to edit the log in.php that's within XAMPP to sanitize login.php show you that it's normal okay um let's say now i go to all right login check dan's logged in i'll go to log out you are logged out and it took me back to the login page and if i go to login check No user logged in. Okay, that's how you create store values in a session, destroy a session. And uh, that's really how you do it. 
Um, there was something. Oh, I said I was going to show you redirect. Well, I did. I just did. I I did it in, with the header tag. So there's something going on with the internal web browser to DevPHP. So um, so I can use the XAMPP one. All right. Um, back to the. All right. So go ahead and do the demo and uh, implement a checkbox that these are stay logged in using a cookie. All right. With that. Um, I will say that I'll see you in the next unit. Again, remember to post in the forum, and uh, we'll talk to you there. All right, take care, have fun, and uh, I'll see you in the next unit.